BMW's promise of exciting drivers, whether it was through the ultimate driving machine or by offering sheer driving pleasure, it has been defined and honed on BMW's M range of cars, specifically the 3 Series. And here you can see some of the glorious cars, the M3 range. And now there is an all new M3. And in this shade of blue, the M3 looks very tempting. Now, even though it is based on the regular 3 Series, it still looks different, doesn't it? The power dome on the hood and the larger air dams really look the business. And the M3 has much wider tracks, giving it a planted and intense look. Although, over the years, the rock star of the M3 range has been the two-door coupe, which is now called the M4. Yes, the two look different, and the four-door is 23 kilos heavier, but mechanically, they are identical. From the wheelbase, to the engine, to the track width, and the tyres. So it's no surprise that when you hit the road, the two feel pretty much alike to drive. And what is that like? Well, for starters, the old naturally aspirated V8 is gone. Instead, you get 425 bhp from a new turbocharged inline six cylinder engine. The really interesting bit is that BMW have opted to go for two small turbochargers, each dealing with three cylinders. So what it does is, it spools up really quickly and along with that, there's an electronic wastegate. So you really get a lot of boost, a lot of torque really early and it manages it really well to give you great drivability. The simple fact is, you get 40% more torque than the outgoing M3. There's some 56 kilograms of torque available from about 1850 RPM and stretches on across the mid-range. So this is a very potent motor, even lower down in the rev range. And despite the turbos, the motor revs pretty cleanly to its 7600 RPM redline. And the punch of the engine is multiplied by the beautiful gearbox. Now the 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox is made by Getrag, but it's tuned by the M Division and it's really a fantastic gearbox. It just shifts so quickly, so promptly. It's incredible, it really is. And the performance is incredible. 0 to 100 in 4.3 seconds. That is supercar territory. And to make the best use of all that performance, the chassis has been thoroughly reworked. Now the M3 may be based off the shell of the 3 Series, but a lot of changes have been made to make it stiffer. You have a carbon fibre and a single aluminum plate at the front to add stiffness over there. Then there's stiffness added to the underbody. You have the rear axle which is mounted rigidly to the chassis. Additional mounting points to all make it just more connected. And it has been lightened inside out. Starting with the engine and crankshaft, which are lighter and more rigid. There's a carbon fibre prop shaft to reduce weight and improve responsiveness. A lot of the suspension bits are aluminium now, as are some of the body panels. And for the very first time, the M3 sedan gets a carbon fibre roof. On the road, the M3 feels intimate and connected. The changes to the chassis and the tight control on its diet deliver a car that flicks easily through tight corners. It also holds its ground when going through long sweepers. And it doesn't feel nervous when blasting down straights either. What's astonishing is the amount of grip on offer on these cars. They just feel incredibly planted. Even when you're driving hard and fast, they are very comfortable. So they're not heavy and scary to drive fast. What it does is immerse the driver into a world filled with thrills. Now this electric steering on the M3 and the M4 has been built by the M division specifically for these cars. And you know what? 
it's a pretty good job. You have three modes all separately controlled for three things. The engine, the suspension and the steering. The steering, whether it's in Comfort, Sport or Sport Plus, has the same ratios. It is just as direct. It's only the weight that changes. The M3 isn't just a hugely exciting car to drive. It once again blazes a trail that the other M cars will have to follow. However, it will have some critics. Die-hard M3 fans will complain that the engine, despite its incredible drivability, lacks the progressiveness of a naturally aspirated engine. But what will surely bother you and me in India is the right quality. Essentially, the M3 is a car that's ready for the racetrack, but that also happens to be doing road duties. So, if you're looking for right comfort, then this might not be the right car for you. The suspension is firm, not harsh, but along with the ultra-stiff chassis, the combination is an ideal for commuting on our roads. Hopefully, those of you who are looking to buy the M3 or the M4 at an expected 1.2 crore rupees will use them as they are meant to be. So we've driven these two cars on the racetrack and on public roads and here are the thoughts that really stick. If you're looking for a pure M experience, these cars deliver. They really take the M3 story forward. You may have a new inline 6 with turbochargers on it, but the performance is stonking right from the word go and it comes in a chassis that feels light, agile. But at the same time, the grip on offer is just astonishing, which makes this car really a lot friendlier to drive faster, but it's still thrilling for the experts, very precise, very balanced. And of course, along with all of that, you've got tremendous brakes. But when you want to drive it on the road, you'll find that this car also offers you more drivability, more everyday usability because of all that torque that's on offer. Of course, in the Indian context, the ride quality is going to be an issue. It's really firm over rough stuff, even in comfort mode. But then, when it comes down to choosing between these two, it'll be whether you want the practicality of four doors of the M3 or you like the slinky sexiness of the M4. And they'll be there in India around Diwali.